Hey guys, Matt here with Carolina Coops, and today we are just north of Detroit, Michigan, a little town called Dryden. And what I'm about to show you is the latest Craftsman Coupe. And this one is the biggest one we've done so far. And also we changed up the roof line. So I want to go ahead and do a complete walk around. Now, for starters, I want to mention a couple disclaimers. Right away, you're going to notice there's OSB, 4x8 sheets of OSB going around the entire coupe. There is, for you YouTube chicken police out there, I wish I had my shirt on right now. For you YouTube chicken police, there is a Predator apron, and just to prove it, let's, uh, I'm going to pull this back. So trust me, the Predator apron is attached to the pressure-treated base going around the entire perimeter. The reason for the OSB is we had to deal with a lot of rain, and this helped keep the work site not so muddy. If we uh, step back and take a look at the entire coop, so the entire footprint is 10 foot wide by 40 foot long. The hen house in the back is actually 10 by 10, and from the front of the hen house this way is 30 foot. So you got 10 by 30 of run space and a 10 by 10 hen house. Now, you'll notice one of the things that makes this coop very unique is we have our charcoal gray colored metal roofing up top here normal gabled roof and what we've done with this one is the customer wanted it turned going the different direction the roof line going in a different direction from the run so it makes it look very different from the other craftsman coupes we've done and it's something i'm glad we did uh, it makes really no difference for rain uh, it's really just simply aesthetics um, so one other thing I wanted to mention also as a disclaimer, if we come around on this side, it is almost June 1st, we're dealing with Corona and one of the problems with Corona is things are on back order, things aren't available. One thing that has not been available is our chicken guardian. So that's why this is framed out and you see nothing here. We're going to leave this here fully screened until their chicken guardian comes in and then they're going to stall it. Other than that, everything is pretty much very very normal again the run is 10 foot wide you'll notice we have a two-tone paint job all the run and trim you know like your rakes and your fascia boards all white and then this coupe also has what we call true board and batten siding and what that means is a lot of our carolina coupes our production coupes we can do true board and batten but it's very expensive because it's a lot more material it's expensive material and it's very time consuming uh, definitely way overkill to do true board and batten on our carolina coupe so we do what's called board and batten style and that means we do the normal siding on it and then we put in the battens to make it look like true board and batten but in this case again true board and batten where you can see a solid three quarter inch board three quarter inches thick by i think these were nine and a half nine and five eighths wide and notice the quarter inch gap in between each board and that is necessary because of expansion and contraction and then you hide that gap with all the battens. So that is true board and batten versus board and batten style. You can see the entire coupe is sitting on a pressure treated base. These, this base is made out of four by six pressure treated lumber. And we have it so that it's standing on its edge. So it's actually five and a half inches tall by three and a half inches wide. And it wasn't absolutely necessary in this particular situation to have the pressure treated base, but this customer loved the idea to have the pressure treated base, mainly to be able to bring in this material that, is, that the chickens will absolutely love that's on the inside to help hold all that in. And also, even though the bottom of our coops are all pressure treated lumber, this, you know, I get it. a lot of people are worried about the bottom of the coops rotting, even though they're not going to. But this also acts as kind of a sacrificial board, if you will. If anything's going to rot, it's going to be the wood that is making direct contact with the ground. The other thing about when we do a pressure treated base is we don't just butt the pieces of wood together. Anyone can do that. It's nice and easy. And honestly, that's perfectly fine. But what we love to do is do a half lap. And what that means is we actually notch out where the wood overlaps each other. And what's nice about that is all that weight is sitting on another piece of wood. And it's the strongest form of joinery, in this case, with a pressure treated base versus if you just butt the piece of wood to another one with the complete width of the board and you just lag it together, you're relying on those lags to hold all that weight versus all the weight is sitting on top of one another. And also, you can't see it right now, 
but we pin it with rebar that goes all the way through both pieces of wood and into the ground. And what's really nice about that is when we have to straighten out, if we ever have to straighten out these big timbers, it's an easy way to do it without worrying about a, like a lag ripping it out versus when it's pinned with a piece of rebar, it goes all the way through, it won't break the piece of wood. The other thing I wanted to mention while we're down here by the run door, we'll go ahead and walk inside and talk about something that we get a question all the time is what to do on the inside of the run. And all oh, before I forget, um, here is a carabiner. I mention them all the time. Uh, I've even had a couple people on YouTube. They're like, why don't you give your customers carabiners? The reason is, is they may not want to use a carabiner. Um, to be honest with you, a lot of our older customers have arthritis. This is brutal on their hands. They don't like carabiners. Sometimes they prefer a padlock, combination lock. But this customer actually um, asked us to get carabiners because she did ask, what's a carabiner? Um, so we went and got them for her. And that's all it is. It's just to make it so that if a raccoon was ever to try to open this up, they can't. So let's walk inside here. And just like all our coops, real quick, if you want to get a shot of this, on all our coops, we have the stainless steel anti-lockout cable. You just pull that, that opens up the gate latch so you can get out. All right, so now here we are inside the run. The other thing I wanted to mention too, again, this coop is 10 foot wide and we have a 512 pitch. And from the ground level to the peak gives us eight foot three inches, 99 inches, lots of headroom. All our sidewalls are six foot tall. That is standard. We do do them custom unless someone requests it. And also I want you to notice this has all been sandwiched together. So it's two walls screwed together to give it that four by four look, but without the cost of having true four by four and mortise and tenon joinery. So all we do is we frame it all out and then we attach the screen and then we build another wall without the screen and we screw these walls to the outside wall and makes it look really, really nice. Now, as far as the material inside, we get asked all the time, what do you put inside the run? What I always tell people is always think about what do chickens have where they come from naturally, and that's the forest floor. And this particular material is actually a composted mulch material. There's some soil in here, there's some manure, and it's hardwood chips that's been sitting around for a while. And it's just perfect because this is what's gonna help the microbes to thrive allow when the nitrogen load starts to increase and the droppings need to break down the microbes have the perfect environment to do that not to mention the chickens love to scratch in it chickens do not want to run with sand they do not want stone and also you never want to put a screen on the entire bottom of your run the chickens lastly hate it you want them to come in here and scratch all right so we'll come down a little bit further in the run here's their water bar and they are going to have electrician come in, install their electric. And when they do that, they're going to have three outlets on the inside of the run, and they're going to have another outlet on the outside. And the electrician took the actual plug with the ready heat, so he made sure that the box that he's going to plug the pump into, the plug fits inside that weatherproof box. And most likely, I think he said he's going to run that up to here, and then he's going to put another outlet on the outside for the thousand watt heater that goes inside the barrel that we don't have in right now because another one of these coronavirus things are all on back order. So as soon as I guess they're back in stock, we're gonna have it automatically drop shipped to the customer and the maintenance guy is gonna install it and then the electrician will plug it in. But other than that, everything else is here. Here's our standard four foot water bar. It's four horizontal nipples. This is our heated system so when the pump well, the pump will turn on by the thermostatic switch when it gets close to freezing, circulates the water. And again, there's a thousand watt heater inside the food safe plastic barrel that's on the outside. That is good for 50 gallons all the way down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, a little snafu on our part, even though this actually would work just fine um, with these craftsman's coops, the opening for the chickens to get into the hen house is actually taller and technically about nine inches taller. So we actually have to ship them out a longer ladder so that it will go to the ground because I don't like the looks of this. Again, even though the chickens will have no problem getting up here, uh, it's just something that drives me nuts if it's not done right. So unfortunately, when they packed the trailer, they sent us our standard ladder and it's just not long enough here. But that's why you see that. Other than that, everything else is the same. Again, the board and batten siding, you see the two-tone paint job. 
lots of headroom. They're going to put their feeder in here. You know, and that reminds me, another question I always get is where to put the feeder. And it's real simple. The only thing I always tell people, though, is try to keep it in the middle. You are going to have some sideways rain come in. If your feeder is out here by the edge, you don't want the food to get wet. But rain coming in here, getting the outside wet is not a problem. One could actually make the argument it might be a little beneficial. But I always tell people, take a shepherd's hook, put it right into the middle of the truss, hang your feeder with a chain. Doesn't get any easier than that. All right, let's walk around this way. And now that we're coming up to the rain barrel side, I do want to mention one of the things that this customer is going to do is they're going to bring out their own gutter guy. And what's nice about that is they can roll on site their own seamless gutter. They have more options for colors. And what I mean by seamless is the gutter guy will come in, he'll measure how long the gutter needs to be. And they actually have a special machine that rolls that metal into the form of a gutter and will cut it for whatever length they need. Now, one thing I also do want to mention, when we came out here, the customer asked a lot, where should I put my chicken coop? And we do get that question a lot, even over the phone. It's almost impossible to really answer that properly without doing a site survey. Um, but I always try to tell people there's advantages and disadvantages to everything. And in this particular situation, I think this location was perfect, especially with all the chicken companion planting they're going to do where the plants are going to benefit the chickens and they got their garden right over there. But there was this beautiful, looks like a maple tree, a beautiful maple tree behind this coop and it just looked great. It's going to provide shade. But one of the disadvantages by putting your coop near a tree is, especially this time of year, you're going to get crap from the tree all over the hen house, getting it dirty. If you put your chicken coop out in the middle of the wide open, that is perfectly fine, especially because the way we design our coops with the solid metal roof, it's not an issue. And you don't have to worry about all the litter and sap and things like that coming from the tree to the chicken coop, discoloring it. But some people are worried like, well, it's out in the full sun. Yeah, that is true. But with a solid metal roof, this acts like the canopy of a tree, providing them the necessary shade that they need. This is a food safe, high density polyethylene plastic barrel. And there's just a hose bib down here that feeds this hose, that feeds the pump, that feeds the water bar. When that pump turns on, it returns the water through this return line here. And again, there's a thousand watt heater that drops down on the inside that's self-regulating. That's what keeps the water from freezing. And this system will work all the way down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So if we come down here to the back side of the hen house, these doors here are our standard doors. This, these are the doors that we put on all our chicken coops. And the reason is because they just are perfect. They work perfectly. Well, what is nice about them is when it comes time to servicing your coop or especially cleaning it out, it just doesn't get any easier. You got these large doors that open all the way up, making it super easy for you to get inside your hen house. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is again, we're on a base, so this does appear to be a little bit higher. The customer is gonna come in after the gutters are on and grade off with soil, leaving it at probably about, I don't know, probably half inch to an inch showing. So in theory, let's see if I can do it. I would be more like right here. And what's nice about that is it makes it waist height for most people. So when it does come time to clean, there's a barrel bolt on each side of your deep litter door. You drop this down just like a tailgate on a truck. And right there, again, it just does not get any easier. Now this hen house is, it splits the main structure in half. So since it's 10 by 10, this hen house is actually five foot deep, 10 foot wide. And when it comes time to clean, you can bring your wheelbarrow up. In this case, I think they're gonna use, they got, you know, we're on a pretty large farm. They have a tractor with a bucket. They can bring the bucket blade right up to here, pulling sweeping motion, pull all that material out and clean this out probably easily with, in under 10 minutes and depending on the number of chickens they put in here they should be able to go at least over a year before they have to clean it out now one of the things i always forget to mention in our videos is how many chickens can go inside this chicken coop and you're right i do forget to mention that because what i want everyone to learn is you should know almost automatically when i say the footprint of the overall structure when i tell you the size of the hen house and i tell you the size of the run if you've done your homework you should already know those numbers if you haven't please go back and watch more of our videos where i talk about here's how to know how many chickens you can put inside any chicken coop not just ours the rules don't change 
<clears throat> so for example, with this hen house, inside here, we have three 10-foot roost bars. And I love what's called the one-foot rule. I think it's just absolutely necessary to give them a king size bed. You don't want to overcrowd a hen house. It's the worst thing you can do for chickens. Now, I also wanted to mention, here are our new rope wrapped roost bars. This was actually a recommendation years ago from a veterinarian down in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is more comfortable for your chickens. It mimics a regular tree branch. And also the number one reason why it was recommended is we had a customer where one of her hens just kept getting bumblefoot and that cut on the bottom of her foot wasn't allowed to heal because it was trapping too much moisture when she was sitting on a smooth roost bar. So she said, wrap it with rope so the air can still get around it, allowing that cut to heal. Uh, so wrapped rope roost bars, not necessary, but it is nice. And I tell you, we've been selling these like crazy. And there is just a perfect example of those rope wrapped roost bars. Hopefully we'll come up with a better name for them. One of the questions we get about them is, can I clean them? You absolutely can. However, if you have to clean your roost bars, something else is wrong. You really shouldn't have to. I can see when they're younger, sure, you know, they're going to get a little bit dirtier, but as they get bigger, when they defecate, it's going to get nowhere near this roost bar. But if you do got to clean them, just like all roost bars, it's meant to be snug, no tools necessary, and they're long. You can pull them out just like that. And again, we do sell just our roost bars. You can get them in any length you want, whether they're our regular roost bars or our wrapped rope wrapped roost bars. And they all come with the high density sockets. They're all cut on our CNC machine. One of the reasons why I love selling roost bars, especially our rope wrapped roost bars, not to mention they're really cool. This is all our roost bars we make from our rejected lumber. We are very, very particular about what lumber we use and appearance is actually very important. Even though our entire coops are all made out of dug fir, which is a very strong wood, when we have wane or that natural edge showing on the two by four, it doesn't look good. But we're able to rip that off and make the roost bars. So it's just another great way to minimize waste because I hate it. And then when we make all the sockets, same thing. The sockets that hold the roost bars is the same exact material we use to cut the flooring and the side walls for the deep litter system. Every board is gonna have a little bit of bow, could potentially have a little bit of twist, a little bit of crook. Um, in the world of framing, we'll call it a crown. And what I'm gonna do is this has a slight bow going up that way. So I want the bow to go up. So I'm just gonna pop this back in here. Look at that, I did it. <laughs> Again, true board and batten on everything, even our doors. Makes it very time consuming, but we love to stick to the same principle, same function, two big doors, deep litter door, and we have these wonderful pop-out doors because you can never have enough ventilation. You got a solid door and a screen door, and you can pop these open, even all the way up here in the north in Michigan. All summer, you can leave these open and what's nice about these new styles is it still provides shade and will block out a lot of the rain that could potentially get into the hen house, even though it won't hurt a thing, but that makes customers feel better. So I'm very happy with the new style. Completely backed with the hardware cloth, just like our run is, which is why, if you notice, you don't have to have a carabiner on these gate latches because it's completely backed up. If a raccoon was ever to open this up, they just realized they just wasted their time. But this does give you direct entry inside the hen house, so we do want another carabiner on that gate latch. You know, the other thing I want to mention too, these walls, so just a quick reminder, the walls on the hen house, from the, from the top of the base to the top board here, six foot. The side walls on the 10 by 10 Craftsman, great number, nine foot. And then to the peak, again, 512 pitch, from the top of the base. Well, let's say that's 11 right there. So probably 11 foot, six inches, almost 12 foot from the ground all the way to the peak. Plus the cupola, notice that beautiful handmade cupola, fully functional. Another measurement I think we get questions on. Again, I'm going from the top of the base because if, it, if there wasn't a base, it'd be sitting on the ground to the bottom of the deep litter door, 32 inches. And again, we do that because most people, if you think about it, that's about waist height. 
But one of the things I, I love when, we, when we're working on our chicken coops and we're inside there shooting the screen on for the windows, putting in the high density, putting in the roost bars. Our hen houses on average are bigger than most people's chicken coops. You can actually fit most people's chicken coops in here and that's not an insult. That probably sounded wrong. What I'm trying to tell you is if you're chicken coop shopping or if you already have a chicken coop and you have chicken problems, I will almost guarantee you it's because of the size of your hen house. And when the hen house is too small, it stresses out the chickens, but also what happens is when the hen house is too small, you don't have enough room to allow the adequate amount of ventilation. The heads are gonna be so close to the roof. So I'm gonna hop in here real quick. I'm standing on the floor of inside the hen house where all the hot air goes out. And it, the ridge cap also is ventilated, just like most people's homes. So when you look in here, look at all this room, 107 inches, almost nine foot from the floor to the peak. And the reason why that's important is when the chickens are sleeping on the roost bars at night, you don't want their heads right next to the roof. It's not healthy for them. We have the same predator protection that we have inside our run. So even when you open up that window, it will not require a carabiner. But the reason why we use gate latches is because it's just so easy. It's one handed. And then here, again, standard with all our chicken coops. It's our little bantam ladder so they can get out with no problem. The hemp was here. This is the part of the video. I would just go ahead and dump it in there. I would probably start, I think you can get away with two 40 pound bales, 44 pound bales. And you want to build up that litter about four to six inches. And that's a great starting point for the deep litter. All right, coming around to another business side of the hen house is one of everyone's favorite parts of the chicken coop. And that's the egg hutch. And this is another direct access to get inside the hen house so we do like to have extra security with the carabiner with the gate latch but when it comes time to collect your eggs this is the best way to have an egg hutch you don't want to lift the roof up you if your hens are in there you will spook them you'll stress them you'll scare them you drop this down you will not scare them i guarantee it but either way this is a five gang egg hutch we have it lined out with a half inch high density polyethylene and you just put your nesting material inside here, the chickens will do the rest. Now, if you don't want, or if you need a bigger nest box, say you got a couple hens fighting over an area, just pull out a divider, they'll be much happier. You could even do something like this if you wanted, giving them options. Just pull these out. You have a broody hen, you just made room for her and her baby chicks. These got dirty on you, you can put them in the dishwasher. Way overkill, but again, I gotta make everyone happy. So that's what we're doing. Well, that's just the easiest way to get access to your eggs, the best way. And also, my YouTube chicken police, I get it. Yes, this is metal. It is far better to have a metal roof on your egg hutch than uh, asphalt shingles or any other material because it does help reflect that heat. Here's another window. Again, we got our three index holes up there pop it open and you can leave it open all summer long it's not something you have to go to every single day you know another nice thing about these big chicken coops especially the craftsmen and i wish we could have taken a camera through the guest house and the customer's main house i've never seen more chicken art in my life and i just think it's absolutely awesome especially when um, she left us with this sign before they had to take off and she asked us to hang it there and she said she's got a lot more coming so that's just something that is really nice about these bigger coops you give yourself so much room for chicken art to make it personal so here's another thing too i wanted to mention about the craftsman style coop and i think we're just going to stick to this because it is working i like how we've made all our windows flip out like this the reason why it took me so long to commit to this is i never wanted to change this look i like the look of the muttons all the time and that's why we had it so you can open and close the windows from the inside this is just working out extremely well and i'll be honest with you i don't think it looks bad but same thing he's got an index point you can have the window this is in the middle you can have it open just like that if you want not sure if it makes that big of a difference as far as the amount of ventilation that goes through there but it is nice to have options and there it is all the way open also, again, because there's half-inch hardware cloth behind these windows, you do not need a carabiner on these gate latches. But I just like them because they're so easy. 
Now here we have a human sized door. This is a three foot by, this should be about 80 inches. That's usually a standard door. Let me just make sure. Yep, 80 inches by three foot. Another reason why it's so nice, one, by turning the roof, it gave us a little bit more room. They're gonna have the electrician put some lights up there. And it just looks really good. It makes our job actually a lot easier. These are pre-hung doors. You just pop them in, shim them, screw them in. And their maintenance guy custom matched the color of their existing doors. So this was a uh, tomato red, I think it's called by Sherwin-Williams. And I mentioned that because I know a lot of times people ask us, what's the color of that coupe? Now, another thing that was a special request by our customers here is they wanted to match the hardware on their house. So we just have these lever style doors, door handles. And if you need to keep your raccoons out, you can lock it. We got a deadbolt, you can lock it. Here is the storage area of the 10 by 10 Craftsman chicken coop. And because the hen house, the solid structure is 10 foot wide, like I mentioned earlier, we split it in half. So this is the interior hen house wall. And then this area here is also five foot deep, 10 foot wide. And one of the best parts about the Craftsman style chicken coop is you're not walking inside the hen house. It's still waist height, so it's extremely easy to clean. And then when you wanna come in and be with your chickens, you're not having to walk inside the hen house, but because it's elevated, you have all this room below for these pull-out drawers that are 500 pound rated drawers. So you can put your hemp on there, your chicken feed, whatever it is you wanna store, you can put it right on these rolling carts and just tuck it away. I'll be honest with you, that all happened on accident when this whole design of the Craftsman Coop started to be created. And it was just a no brainer. Take advantage of that space underneath there so it didn't become dead space. So it gives you the best of both worlds. And other than that, again, she loves her chicken art. So she's gonna come in here, hang pictures. She's gonna have a chair in here. Again, another pull out drawer, nice and easy. 500 pound rated drawers, put whatever you want on them. And here's a good shot of the back side of the windows with a half inch hardware cloth. So here are the inside hen house doors. And what's really nice about this is, let's say it just happens to be time that you wanna add hemp to your hen house and it's raining outside. You can just open these up, pull your hemp out from underneath the drawer and from the drawers in the storage area and just add it. Just doesn't get any easier than that. It's so nice to have options. So there's the Craftsman Coop, 10 by 10, 10 by 30 run. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe, hit that bell wherever it is right now so you get notifications every time we go live or have new videos. It is absolutely so important to us to gain as many followers, subscribers, to help build our audience, help share everything that we're doing. So whether, if you're not gonna buy one of my chicken coops, you can learn from our videos and build your own and not make the mistakes I know a lot of people have made in the past when they're building their own chicken coop. And also more importantly, if you guys wanna learn more about Carolina Coops, please go over to carolinacoops.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe, hit that bell so that if we have new videos coming out, or when we do have new videos coming out, you'll be notified and more importantly, especially when we go live. That's one of our best, most fun parts about interacting with our audience is when we go live and answering all those questions you guys have. So again, if you have any more questions, please leave them down below. Check us out at carolinacoops.com. And also you can always give us a call, 919-794-3989. Thanks for watching.